Hi. We are now plotting graphs from linear to quadratic curves. But how do you recognize a quadratic equation? And what form does it take? Now, if a quadratic equation takes a form of ax squared plus bx plus a c, you could see that the order of a quadratic equation is of order 2. The power of x is 2. And please do recognize in a quadratic equation, the b can be a 0. It's still called quadratic. If we have an equation like this, 3x squared minus 2x plus 4, yes, it is a quadratic. But if we have 3x squared, it is still a quadratic. If we put a minus 2x, yes, it's still a quadratic. Or if your y equals to 3 minus 3x squared plus 1, it is a quadratic. You first need to recognize what a quadratic equation is. Now, if I have y to be a minus 3x squared plus 2 over x, if you look at it, the x is below. This makes it not quadratic. It's not quadratic. A quadratic equation takes this form. Hope you get that. Now your a, if your a, the coefficient, when we say the word coefficient, we meant the number in front of x or x squared or whatever number. The coefficient of x squared here is a. The coefficient of x is a b. And the c is a constant. Now, a quadratic equation always takes the shape of a par parabola. Right? Parabola. And I know some naughty boys, some cheeky ones, calls it parabola. Whatever you call it, right? A parabola takes the shape of a U. It's a line. There is a line of symmetry where this distance equal to this distance. Any point, this distance equals to this. The line of symmetry, when you fold the curve, it overlaps point to point. So a quadratic curve has this very significant property, the parabola. There is a line of symmetry that divides the curve into two equal parts and you could just fold it. Got it? Now, what happens if A is greater than zero and if A is less than zero? Then, there is a hint. If A is greater than zero, your curve would look like a moon, like a smile, uh, a good smile, we can call it a valley, whichever you feel comfortable, if your A is greater than zero. But if your A is less than zero, if your A is less than zero, then the shape of your graph will be your, it will be a mountain or a frown. Look at the shape of the gate you get a mountain or a frown. That is if A is less than zero, when A is negative. Now, so when A is positive, it's a smile, a valley. And when it's negative, it is a frown, a mountain. As I said to you, a graph, a parabola, has a line of symmetry, and this is called the maximum point of the curve. Now this information about quadratic is very vital for you to understand the graph and when you plot the graph, you know if you're right or wrong. Without such information, you may not know if you plotted the right graph. Now this will be for A less than zero, you've got a maximum point. But if A is greater than zero, you get a line of symmetry 
passing through this point and this point is the minimum point of the graph. Have you got that? Great. Take note again. The highest order is 2. It's called a parabola. All quadratic equations have a line of symmetry. It, is, it divides into two equal parts. The distance between them, if I were to say this distance, will be equal to this distance. Got it? This distance between here, this distance will be equal to this distance. That's the distinct feature of a parabola, a parabolic curve, right? So we're now going to plot how do we draw this graph. I'm afraid we've got to go back to some traditional methods in learning to draw graphs. We're not going to spoon feed you. I remember when I was young, my teachers hardly gave us very much information. We hardly had to rely on calculators. My dad believed in making me a walking calculator, WC, not a water closet to be flushed, right? So you, if you want to be good in maths, you've got to learn to be a WC, a walking calculator. To learn that, your timetables have to be good. And you'll learn more from me as we go along when we get to a chapter on indices you will see the power of knowing your timetables and that's very useful in maths so we can apply that these traditional skills into doing the sums and building your mental power let's look at this graph do you see what your a is yes your a is the coefficient of x squared and your a is 1 your b is a coefficient of x and your b is minus 6. Yes, and your c, oh no, there's nothing, no fears. If it's nothing, what does c stand for? Aha, you got it? c is a 0, yes it is. Now having got this, we can recognise at once this is a quadratic equation. And we're going to plot this graph. Before we do the graph, we need points. When you draw a curve, unlike a straight line, a straight line, you just need two points. But we just want to be very sure. That's why we need the third point. Please, do not use eight points on a straight line. You're wasting your time. But here, for a curve with three points, how do you draw it? How does the curve go? Three points. One, two, three. Is your curve going to go this way? Is your curve going to go that way? Which way? So that's why in curves, we need a minimum of six points. All right, let's do it. I would love eight points. But never mind. When you draw a curve, determine your points. As I said in the earlier part, in your straight line, you may want to start with X being 100 and going to a thousand, then that's going to be very foolish, right? Take, choose your points. What are the best points? Let's start with some negative and some positive. Let's find a balance. Let's find the coordinates. This is what we call domain. Domain, the range for X, the choice. And it's good to take easy points. If you look at y for this graph, it's made of two particular parts, x squared and a minus 6x. Put together and you get your y. Let's find out what is x squared. Here it's where it calls for your timetables. Minus 4 times minus 4. A minus and a minus, when you multiply, it becomes a plus. So this is 16, 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. That's your first part. The next part is to find out what is minus 6x. Be very mindful of this little evil thing there, the minus. Don't topple. This is where careless mistakes arise. You have a minus 6 multiplied 
with an x. A minus 6 and a minus 4. When you multiply, what do you get? Minus times minus is a plus. You get a 24. Right. So now, let's work on this. Minus 6 times minus 3. 18. Great. Minus 6 times minus 2. 12. Minus 6 times minus 1. 6. 0. And look at this again. Plus 1. Minus 6 times plus 1. Minus 6. Minus and plus. You get, when you multiply, you get a minus. Minus 6 and a plus 2. You get a minus 12. From here, what do you do? What is y made of? A y for this equation is made of x squared minus 6x. So we just add these two numbers here. And we get minus 16 plus 24 is a 30, 40. 9 plus 18, 27. 4 plus 12, 16. 1 plus 6, 7. 0, when you add them up, 1 plus minus 6. Yes, it looks like we are doing simple addition, isn't it? Now, if you look at 4 minus 12, what do you get? Yep, you get a minus 8. Be very careful when you do your addition and subtraction. Do not make careless mistakes or you're going to lose all your marks and you will not get your graphs flowing smooth. You will see it, it's all funny. So let's now plot this graph. Having got the picture of what your x is and your y, you will notice that as x moves from minus 4 to 2, you will notice your y was 40 and then it dropped to 27 and it went down to 16 and then to 7 and then it went, went down to 0. Look at that, your y dropping smoothly. All right, and then it went right down to minus 5 and minus 8. It was dropping. So this tells us that a graph is just dropping, perhaps with more points, we may then see the rise of x. Right? Now, what happens if I give more points to this point? It is this going to be a scale where x is dropping, it's not a straight line draw. It is a draw where it is a curve, a gradual curve. And we want to find out if it's going to turn upwards, we can give more points then. Let's find out more about it. All right, we, we're going to look at, I'm going to leave this out and I'll come back to drawing this graph shortly. We now look at just learning how to calibrate the points. Let's look at another equation, x squared minus 2x plus 8. Now as I said to you, it's good to form a traditional style of doing equations, getting it from basic, how do we derive the points? Now your a here is a 1, your b is a minus 2, and the constant is an 8. So we get the points of x squared minus 2x plus 8. And this whole thing put together will give you your y. Could you get all the points here, please? Right. If you have done that, great. You would find this is 16, 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. Yeah. And if here, if you look at it, minus 2 times x, these are the various values of x. Substitute them in. Minus 2 times minus 4. Yes, you get an 8, a minus and a minus put together, you get a plus. So you've got these values down. All right, minus 2 times 1, you've got a minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8. As for the constant, for every point of x, the constant is remaining there. 
the very fact it's called a constant is not changing. So you've got an 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. And for every point when x is minus 4, what is your y going to be? When x is minus 3, what's your y going to be? Could you work them out? You'll realize that your y is made of x squared minus 2x plus 8. Let's put them for the value when x is minus 4. You get a 32. Here, you get 9 plus 6, 15 plus 8, 23. 4 plus 4, 16. Sorry, 4 plus 4, 8 plus 8, 16. 3 plus 8, 11, 8. Here you get a 7. And here you get an 8. And um, you get a 17. Take away 6, you get 11. Here you get an 8 plus an 8 is a 16. Now, at every point when x changes, y changes. This is the rule. Another word for y is fx. It's a function of x. And fx is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 8. Right? Okay, so you would notice the change when x changes from minus 4 to minus 3 to minus 2 to 1. As x is moving, x is increasing. What happens to y? Let's have a mental picture and later translate them into a curve, a graph. You see that when x is minus 4, y is 32, and then it drops to 23, then it drops to 16, 11, and then begins to drop again to 8, and then to 7, and then it begins to pick up at this point, 8, 11, 16, is going upward. Do you see the shape of the quadratic? Did you see the smooth flow of points? Rather than if you made an error, you'll find that it goes up, goes down, oops, goes up, goes down, oops, goes up, goes down, oops. All right, you will know that you have plotted some points wrongly. But if you have this value added information that this is a quadratic equation, you will know for sure that something's wrong with your curve when it doesn't flow like a parabola. The shape has to be a parabola. We'll now get to plotting the graphs.